Ladies and gentlemen, it is time that we welcome to the podium Mr. Ramesh Lawrence Marat, the Member of Parliament for Kabaki. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, my brother and colleague on the platform, the Honourable Mr. Jack Warner, the Member of Parliament for Shagornas West, and my other brothers and colleagues, um, Dr. Carson Charles, Mr. Ashwani Mahabir, and uh, the colleagues who were here before, Stephen Deodat, Jacqueline Tiwari Quash, and my good friend, um, Mr. Jurai, my brothers and sisters of Mission Road and all of those who are listening on the electronic media, members of the media. Today in Trinidad and Tobago, we face a situation of really life and death. And I mean that. I am here on this crusade because I see if things in the UNCA remain as they are, we are going to have money and his family and the party, the PM, in government for another hundred years. Yeah. Your children would be in bondage. It will be a return of indentureship and slavery. We will have no fundamental human rights. We be living in a dictatorship. You would, this country would be a democracy to a country like Zimbabwe. They would have more rights than we have here. We would be worse than Burnham, Guyana. We'd be worse than Papadoc in Haiti. And it's not only because what Manning has done over the last two years which have demonstrated that he's a dictator, but he has produced a draft constitution for Trinidad and Tobago in black and white. And anyone who reads it, you would see that he has amended, he wants to amend the constitution to take away the right of religious observance. He wants to take away the freedom of the media. He wants to take away the freedom of expression. He has reduced these rights, he has made them fettered, and he has qualified them. And with respect to the right to religious observance, he has totally abolished it in the constitution, his draft constitution. If you take a lie, get a copy and read it. That is why Jack and myself, we built the constitution in Matala. We built the draft. Mr. Pante, however, has said that he wants to talk to Mr. Manning about this draft. He wants to see whether they could agree to certain things. And I want you to understand that Mr. Manning only needs two votes in the parliament to get that constitution passed. Mr. Manning under that constitution has said in black and white that he wants to be both the president and the prime minister. He wants to be an executive president. He wants to have all the powers. He must control the prosecution process, the police service, the teaching service, the public service, the judiciary. He must have an accumulation of power. He will be like an emperor. He will be like Stalin. He will be like Papa Doc. He will be like Hitler. Zimbabwe, Mugabe, and that is what is at stake in this country. So when it is that you have all this old talk and all this gallery in the parliament, I want to tell you something here tonight. No matter how good that front bench looks, as Ajvani tells you, no matter whether it is for cosmetic or for dressing up or for just gallery and for the leader of the opposition just to be able to say to return it to the pristine glory. In truth and in fact, no amount of talk, they talk in the front bench in the parliament could get the opposition into government. The party, the UNCA party is the vehicle, the political vehicle to get into government. 
And if that vehicle is not properly driven, if it doesn't have morality, credibility, leadership, and if the vehicle only wants to remain in opposition, is committed to remain in opposition, then it would never get into government. Then we're wasting time. And therefore I decided, I decided that I have a choice. I have a choice either to fool the people, to betray the people, to sacrifice the people, to make every person in Trinidad and Tobago a slave to Manning and the PNM, or to get up and become part of a crusade for change. And that is what this movement for change is about. And I want you to know, I want you to know that as I sat there and as Dr. Carson Charles spoke, I remembered that what got me into politics was the nice speeches that Mr. Pandey made. And I thought they meant real things. And when we got into government, I worked, I worked hard from 1991 to 1995 to assist in putting the UNC into government. And when we got into government, I saw trouble. I saw trouble. I saw the founding principles of the party. Honesty, equality, justice for all, integrity, being eroded, being destroyed. I went and I begged Pandi as a child, don't do this. Take the party back. Rescue the party. Don't throw away the party because you are in power. And you remember I led a revolution for change in the internal elections of the party so that we can build the party to remain in government forever. Mr. Pandey was interested at that time only in the parasitic oligarchy. Yes! 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 And you remember, you remember, I was dismissed, I was expelled. All sorts of things were said about me. But he knew at that time that if he came to you and he merely said, Ramesh had a deal with the PM, you would believe it. He told me that. He said he could tell Indo Trinidadians anything and they would believe it. No more! No more! No more! And he knows that is why he's talking and saying, Ramesh and Jack have a deal with the PM. Because he believes that you wouldn't come out to listen to us. You won't follow us. Look at this meeting here tonight. Look at the large crowd. Victory for you, my brother and sister. Anywhere we go throughout the country, hundreds and thousands of people come in to listen to us. They want the message of Ram Win. Ramesh Jackwana with St. Peter. And that is why I say it tonight. Just as we work hard from 1991 to 1995 to put the UNC in the government, this movement for change will be the instrument for the UNCA to get into government, my brother and sister. Because I want to tell you something. If we do not succeed, forget it. There will be no more struggle and fight in Trinidad and Tobago. You won't be able to move money. And I want to tell you tonight, there is no doubt in my mind whatsoever that a few months ago, the decision to keep the opposition in, in opposition was certainly made by the people in the UNC. Some of those people believe that they just want to be in opposition. They do not care. They only want to be a member of parliament. They would agree with Mr. Pandey if he said black is white. If he said bull full, they would say yes, sir. Some of them, if Pandey tell them kneel down, they will kneel down. Yesterday, we are doing a debate in the parliament. A debate on integrity. Well, boy, I was so happy. Boys and girls, ladies, I was so happy to know that Kamala and them now could talk about integrity. Do you know? In 2000, in, in, in 2000 and 2001, when I went to the cabinet and I said the UNC must stand up for honesty and integrity, you know what they said? That don't win election. What? 
That's the election. When Pandey decided to fire me because I wanted an inquiry into corruption. And if he had listened to me,